Okay, I think we're on part four now, and this is just after the slide on ozone, O3. And this illustrates what I was mentioning in that last video about nitrate here having three different structures. And as it says at the bottom, the real nitrate is analyzed to have three equal bonds between nitrogen and oxygen. And it's really four electron pairs being shared between nitrogen and three other atoms. So as it says, it's like a one and a third bond can't draw a one and a third bond so we just draw these different possibilities with the realization that nitrate is somewhere in the middle and for a molecule or an ion the more resonance structures we can draw the more stabilizing that is and so we want to give the complete picture by drawing all the possibilities uh, and for the molecules we see they may only have one structure uh, that will work but once you start drawing double bonds and asking yourself if you could draw them in different places to make it work, uh, to make that octet rule work, then you should draw those other possibilities. And for a nitrate, it's these three. Now once we draw those structures, it's not always true that they're equally equivalent for describing what the molecule really looks like. In nitrate, all three of those structures are essentially the same. One double bond between nitrogen and oxygen, and then the two single bonds. Here's three resonance forms for an ion called cyanate, and it would be worth your practice to verify these on your own. If you start with one oxygen, one carbon, one nitrogen, and a negative charge, that's 16 electrons all together, and that leads to these three possibilities. Octet rules satisfied across the board for each one. And as it says, these are not equivalent, and so is one of these better than the other? Is one of them more like what cyanate really looks like? And the answer is yes, but we need a little more uh, help to figure that out. Turns out that third structure is the one that's most uh, commonly used to represent cyanate because it is the best one. It has to do with calculating these things called formal charges. Uh, and it's just a little recipe for counting electrons according to that formula. And as it says at the bottom, the the most stability is when you have zero formal charge or when they are as low as possible. And we'll get back to that cyanate example, but here is uh, a calculation for carbon monoxide. Both atoms have the octet rule satisfied, so that's good, but a little bit of instability is due to the fact that the carbon and oxygen each have a formal charge. Negative on carbon, positive on oxygen. This is not the same as negatives and positives that we use to talk about electrons being transferred. It's really just a bookkeeping method to alert us to structures that are more stable than others. And carbon monoxide is a highly reactive molecule, and uh, the formal charges suggest that that should be true. Carbon dioxide, by contrast, is much more stable, and if you do those calculations on these atoms, you get zero across the board. So you want to get used to calculating such things for every atom in any structure so that uh, we'll know which atoms have minimum formal charges. And you know, if we can draw resonance structures where there are zero formal charges, um, that's the one we're going to tend to focus on. Um, here's what we look for with formal charges. Uh, once we identify where they are, we pick out the structures that, again, minimize these plus and minus one is better than plus and minus two and as it says negative charges should be on the most electronegative atom and in your periodic chart that's the ones up in the top right hand corner like nitrogen oxygen fluorine especially they can handle negative charges better than say carbon can and so resonance structures that have that to be true uh, are better <clears throat> here's the answer key to doing formal charges for cyanate and uh, our answer there says that that structure on the right is best because notice the only formal charge is a negative one on oxygen and oxygen can handle that negative charge better than carbon better than nitrogen uh, the one on the far left is probably the second best structure because it also only has a single formal charge the one in the middle yikes we got formal charges on two of the three atoms as you do this, you encounter some trends like these where you can recognize on site which patterns give zero formal charges. You should commit this type of stuff to memory. It will come in handy later on.